day and welcome to our weekly online Informante TV News Bulletin. I am Alvine Miriam Samuel. The Namibia Training Authority has kicked off its 30-day registration period this week and the local companies that spend more than 1 million Namibian dollars on payroll in a year now have until 27 February to join the list of entities that will contribute 1% of their yearly payroll expense to the vocational education and training levy. Esther Pondoka said that the official notice imposing the VET levy was published by the Minister of Education on the 27th of January. Under this notice, which I mentioned above, the vocational education and training levy is payable by every employer with an annual payroll of one million Namibian dollars or more. The following employers are exempted from payment of the VET levy. The state as an employer is exempted. The regional councils is identified or defined by the Regional Councils Act of 1992. The charitable organizations, the public and not for gain educational institutions, faith-based organizations, and this is whether or not they are supported wholly or partly by the grants from the public funds. Joseph Mukendwa explained that non-compliance in the registration will place companies in a difficult position. We are to have uh, compliance inspectors appointed by the Minister of Education. And the role of the compliance inspectors will basically be that, to ensure that employers that are eligible to pay the levy actually um, uh, uphold that obligation. Trasco Group's Institute for Open Learning, IOL, awarded cash prizes totaling 100,000 Namibian dollars during the Ministry of Education's prize giving for the best 2013 educator and learner performers at the Safari Hotel last week Friday. In recognition for their contribution for exceptional performance of learners in their respective educational zones, Erongo Education Director John Aweb whose regional maintained its status as the premier education region at grade 12 level during 2013, was awarded 50,000 Namibian dollars. Kunkuni Second Education Inspector in the Kavango region, Scholastika Hausiku, was awarded 30,000 Namibian dollars, while the principal of St. Boniface College in the same region, Phyllis Yesudasan, walked away with 20,000 Namibian dollars. We have this IOL boasting over 40,000 students studying through 400 different course offerings and we have spent since 2005 a good 700 million into this education track. We think this is the right thing to do and we feel that when it comes to the promotion of education and training, this country cannot afford conscientious objectives. We must all get involved. The city of Winduk will continue obtaining court eviction orders against illegal occupants of the land on the periphery of the city, which at the moment is going unabated. The city of Winduk says most of the informal settlements that have developed through the invasion of city-owned land are hampering the delivery and transfer of this land to other parties for developmental purposes. The city has noted with concern that the illegal grabbing of city land commonly takes place in areas around Kuryanghap Farm 508, Farm Marensha 380, Ochimushe and Okuryangawa. So the city again is faced with continuous pro proliferation of informal settlement and land invasion particularly on the periphery of the urban areas. The main reason is the migration from smaller towns to window in search for better life or for jobs or for any other opportunity. Most of these informal settlements have developed through the invasion of city-owned land, which makes services del service delivery and planning by the city of window quite difficult. He added that the relentless nature of land invasions call for urgent actions with various key stakeholders while urging residents occupying land illegally to refrain from doing so and to approach the city of Ventuk for clarification. So illegal electricity connection poses a threat in the supply chain of ensuring that the city 
continues to provide power to its residents at a sustainable level. Amukugu again singled out the residential areas of Koreanga, Pukuriangawa, Akahana and Havana as the main culprits. The Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources will decide next week on the fate of the damaged yacht, Muskie and its cargo, which has washed ashore on the infamous Skeleton Coast last Sunday. The yacht belongs to Michael Kuhn from Benoni in South Africa, which after a dramatic ocean rescue got lost at sea while headed for St. Helena Island in December last year. The vessel was discovered near Agra Fria. Kuhn and his girlfriend Wendy Swanapu were supposed to sail across the Atlantic Ocean en route to Mexico, but it did not work out as planned. The special Commonwealth baton arrived in Namibia on Tuesday, and the Namibian National Olympics started yesterday with the journey of the baton through the country en route to Botswana. The baton, containing a message by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, came from Zambia and was transported by helicopter to the sports field of Pioneer Park Primary School in Ventug yesterday. Under the watchful eyes of Nampolen school children of Pioneer Park Primary School, a British soldier handed the baton over to Beata Nairambo, a Namibian long-distance runner. She started the Namibian leg of the Commonwealth baton that was taken through the streets of Ventuk before leaving on its next destination, Botswana. The baton will be accompanied in Namibia by a team from Commonwealth Games Federation and a TV camera crew from the BBC broadcasting highlights of the event in Namibia to destinations all over the world. From Botswana, the baton will travel through other countries before it will arrive at the 2014 Commonwealth Games being held in Glasgow, Scotland from the 23rd of July to the 3rd of August 2014. According to the British High Commissioner, Mariana Young, the arrival of the baton in Namibia highlighted the country's commitment to the Commonwealth and to the values of the Commonwealth Games, which are integrity, responsibility, endeavor, trust and openness. Thank you for watching. This is Informante News. See you again next week. Until then, goodbye.